the meeting to order. Good evening. This is the meeting of April 26, 2021. Ladies and gentlemen, pursuant to the applicable portions of the New Jersey Public Meetings Law, adequate notice of this meeting has been given. This meeting is posted on the bulletin board located in the corridor of this building and published in the newspaper on January 13, 2021. Councilwoman Gingrich will lead in the Pledge of Allegiance. Please rise. to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Councilman Bacchion? Here. Councilwoman Gingrich? Present. Councilman Burns? Here. Councilman Signorelli? Here. Councilman Buccio? Here. Councilman Gross? Council President Godano. Here. Discussion by administration. Thank you, Council President. Letter A is the cancellation of taxes for 100% disabled veterans. They're on the official agenda as item number 10.1, 10.2, and 10.3. And respectively, they um, affect Block 4.117, Lot 27, Block 1037 lot 4 and block 1246.02 lot 9. Item 4B is the Ocean County CARES grant addendum. Um, since there are still some, since there are still additional funds, since there are still additional funds left over the CARES grant, uh, the county has extended it uh, for an additional year of spending. Uh, this would be like the fourth round, fourth, fourth phase of it. Reimbursements, yes. Reimbursements, yes. And it's not free money, but it's reimbursements. So this extends it for 2021. And that is on the official agenda, number 10.4. Uh, letter C is the 2021 You Drive, You Tax, You Pay Distracted Driver Crackdown Grant. And that is on the official agenda, item 10.5. Item D is authorization uh, for receipt of proposals for cardiologist. Um, I, I know we went out a couple times before, but we hadn't received any cardiologist professional services, so we're trying it again. And that is on the official agenda, number 10.6. Uh, letter E is Coption Shops Federal Fiscal Year 2021 grant, and that is on the official agenda, 10.7. It should be noted that the last two, the two police grants, uh, the Cops and Shops initiative would be from May 26th through September 15th. So we just want to let everybody know uh, this is when we have uh, undercover police officers go into the various liquor stores throughout uh, Berkeley Township and uh, just to make sure that there's no, obviously, underage uh, purchases of alcohol. So. The next one here would be F. F. This is uh, uh, some legislation we brought up at the last meeting. Uh, we're really, I'm just going to take this mask off this, uh, just a little bit. Just, uh, I'm going to ask uh, Councilman Signorelli to jump in, jump in this a little bit. Um, you know, this is just supporting some legislation that will provide immunity to our senior plan real estate development associations related to COVID 19. Uh, there's a big push from our, our senior communities uh, to get them open. A lot of the residents want to start going back to the clubhouses for their recreation events. They want their pools open. Uh, they want their trips to, to resume. And there's uh, apprehension, uh, and rightfully so, among the leadership of the various associations because of the potential liability if they do open up. So I'm just going to defer uh, to Councilman Signorelli, and he could just add a little bit more about how important it is that we get legislation to indemnify our uh, senior community so they can open up. Thank you, Councilman Signorelli, for your leadership on this issue and uh, for bringing this to the Council for a resolution. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you for your support, uh, Mayor and Council. Uh, the, uh, this, this item has become a real thorn in our sides. Um, as the senior communities and leadership of the senior communities, what's ended up happening is the uh, and we were unaware of this back when SARS came around, the insurance companies dropped any coverage 
uh, for uh, viruses. So we virtually have no indemnity should uh, anything happen. Uh, if somebody catches the virus, or they could sue us. And uh, we're not only the not only association uh, liable, but the the uh, officers of the association are liable personally. So this hopefully these these two bills will. Uh, will allow uh, the governor, will go through and the governor will sign them and uh, with the support of the mayor and council, uh, we're pushing to get this done so that way we can open up our facilities and get our seniors back to uh, a normal activity. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Good. Letter G is uh, traffic coordinates regarding making a one-way section on the Butler Boulevard extension as it goes into Bayview. It's on the official agenda as item number nine because it's an introduction of an ordinance. And Councilman <coughs> Burns had brought this to um, the attention of administration as a need here. We ran it by traffic safety, but I didn't know if the councilman wanted to speak to the ordinance at all. Uh, just quick, uh, if anybody knows the intersection of Bayview and Butler, when you make a right, you can go out onto uh, Bayview, but anybody coming north on Bayville cuts across to uh, take that little uh, angle there so anybody going north now have to go up to the stop sign and make a left they're going to be uh, paving Butler and you know what happens after they pave it becomes a uh, racetrack so I think we um, did the right thing there all right yeah. thank you as I said we took it to traffic safety they thought the same thing this uh, bringing that to our attention definitely makes it a safer intersection uh, letter H is I think five or so picnic approvals they're on the official agenda as item 10.9, and I think there's one in May, through three in June, and one in July. So, yep, five. And letter I, I think the mayor is going to take. Yes, waiving uh, fees for park use. Uh, obviously, during the COVID-19 uh, situation, there's been uh, limited on indoor activities, but even though the governor today increased indoor and outdoor activity effective in uh, May. Uh, we have a lot of uh, groups that would like to meet now that the weather is getting nice or hold events at our facilities. And uh, these are uh, three nonprofit organizations that do a lot uh, for our community in general. And they are requesting to use our parks. We do have a fee structure, but uh, they've all sent uh, letters uh, requesting uh, the township waives the fees uh, for park use. So I am uh, uh, making the recommendation, uh, so that would be uh, on the official item 1010, 1025, and 1026. Uh, I know uh, Councilman uh, Bacchio wanted to, make, to say a few things on number three because that one actually came in uh, yesterday, and we were for, we weren't sure if we were going to be able to get it on the agenda. And then Councilman uh, Bacchio had prepared some sort of remarks, but yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, <clears throat> this a letter came from the Knights of Columbus, which is. A nonprofit organization who provides a lot of service and monies to uh, to our community. Uh, the letter came and it says uh, the uh, Knights of Columbus Council 8603 requ requested the use of the Whispering Pines Pavilion in Holiday City for Saturday, June 5th. We plan to use it for a picnic. We are a nonprofit organization providing fellowship and service to our community. Please consider this as our request of Berkeley Township to waive fees for the use of Whispering Pines Pavilion. So I, I, um, I agree with the uh, resolution, and I think we should all uh, be in favor of it. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And then thank you, Councilman. And just to give you a quick uh, synopsis of the community uh, medical center, uh, the Holly Twigs, they're a nonprofit organization, a group of 40 plus members of Berkeley Township ladies usually meet on a monthly basis at the Holiday City Berkeley Clubhouse. Since the pandemic, they have not been able to meet in person and that they're asking to meet on the, the day that's uh, in the resolution. So they're another uh, nonprofit that does uh, good work for the community and the hospital. And of course, the Central Regional Baseball Program, uh, which is the Diamond Club. They're also a nonprofit and they raise uh, funds to support the Central Regional Baseball Club. And they're looking to do the Veterans Park uh, stage area for their fundraiser. All right, I'm taking my mask off for this one. And many of you are aware, uh, recently New Jersey National Gas has filed a petition uh, with the 
BPU to raise uh, base rates again, uh, this time by nearly 25%. Um, if you all recall, six years ago, they proposed a 24% increase in rates. Just three short years ago, they proposed another 19% increase rates. Uh, to be back uh, so soon for another increase is totally unacceptable. According to New Jersey Natural Gas, their proposed rate increase will raise, raise an average monthly bill to $141.17, up 28.7 cents, or 24.8, for a typical customer who uses 100 therms a month. You know, a $336.84 yearly increase on our seniors and on fixed incomes and our hardworking families in the middle of a pandemic is outrageous. I want to thank uh, Council President Angelo Gadagno, uh, who I spoke to this week, who immediately was able to place uh, the resolution on the, on the agenda. You know, the proposed increase would create an undue financial hardship on our homeowners, like I mentioned, especially our seniors on fixed incomes and our hardworking uh, families. You know, um, just to give you an idea, back in uh, 2015, uh, they proposed a 25 per, uh, per, uh, 24 percent increase. Uh, Councilman Bacchione and I uh, went to the public hearing in Freehold, and uh, I testified on behalf of the municipality how outrageous I thought it was. In 2015, uh, the rate it was for based on 100 uh, therms, the average monthly home based on 100 therm usage in 2015 was $95.44. But as I mentioned, they in that year, they, 2016, they asked for a 24% increase. The BPU negotiated down and granted them a 7.4% increase. So that bill went from $95.44 to $104.61. Then in 2019, they asked for a 19% increase. Okay? They got in 2019 through the BPU negotiations they gave a 9.6% raise. So now that $104.61 in 2016 went to $114.65. And these were all just rough numbers in 2019. Now they're back uh, for a 25% uh, increase. And if the full 25% increase is granted, the average uh, rate based on 100 therms would be $141.17. That's, that's uh, outrageous. That is outrageous. and. Uh, you know, once again, I'm uh, calling on the council uh, to, to adopt a resolution in opposition. And it says, whereas NJNG is seeking approval from the BPU to impose a 24.8% rate increase on ratepayers' bills to pay for infrastructure improvements totaling $165.7 million, million. And whereas the requested increase would increase approximately $28.07 per month on the average ratepayers' bill. Whereas additional rate increases will be adding to the overall burden of natural gas consumers and impact ne negatively on our Berkeley Township home owners. Whereas the COVID-19 pandemic has had a negative financial impact on many Americans and requesting an increase, especially so high, during this pandemic is unconscionable. Whereas we are requesting the Division of Rate Council, uh, whereas the Director of the New Jersey uh, Division of Rate Council, Stephanie Brand, has voiced her concern over the high increase. And whereas we, the mayor and the council, wish to go on record in opposition of NJNG uh, rate increase, and it's ultimately and cause an unnecessary financial hardship for our struggling residents. So, this is the uh, resolution uh, that we're adopting tonight. It's on the official. And uh, once the public hearing uh, notice is going out, I plan on attending again uh, to testify at the public hearing. And I know uh, Councilman uh, Bacchione came with me the last time and I'm sure he'll uh, ride shotgun again to, to go so um, like I said you know I understand costs costs go up uh, expenses go up but you know the, the money that they're looking to raise uh, for a pipeline has no bearing on uh, the Ocean County it's about a half a million a little over half a million uh, ratepayers for New Jersey natural gas amongst the three counties and uh, you know uh, it's time for the uh, leadership of New Jersey Natural Gas to sharpen their pencils and get realistic. So, thank you very much for the opportunity to speak on this. And that is on the official 10.11. Item K, I'm going to ask the Chief, uh, Deputy Chief uh, Santucci, to weigh in. Uh, this is just authorizing a grant application for body worn cameras. Uh, late last year, uh, the legislature adopted a bill. Um, making it uh, mandatory 
and then they came back later and provided some funding uh, for the cameras. About uh, about four years ago, we were one of one of the first uh, municipalities in Ocean County to have body cameras on our police department. In fact, we received a grant at that time uh, through the Pro Ocean County Prosecutor's Office, uh, former prosecutor Joe Coronado, uh, that funded a good portion of the cameras that we currently have now. Unfortunately, since they're used every day, uh, some cameras are handed down from police officer to police officer. Uh, they're failing very quickly. Uh, so this will be a, a, something that uh, we certainly need uh, moving forward. And we want to be aggressive in applying for our, our grant. Uh, Deputy Chief, I hope I left you some stuff to say. <laughs> sure, say a little, little bit. Now you hit on a lot of the points. Um, just to say the fact that the current uh, cameras that we use, the company was bought out by Axon, which is a major brand now. A lot of people know it through, they make Taser. So um, VView is the current company that we have. They, they are no longer in business. So to get those units repaired and replaced is almost, I mean, the wait time is, it's almost impossible at this point. And there's, and new technology comes out every three to five years. So with this grant, we can update everything and have the officers with the best equipment on the road. So, and it's like uh, the mayor said, it's mandated. Um, through the body attorney general, so something we have to abide by, and hopefully we can get the funding, you know, yep. to get the best equipment. So this is one of those state mandates that we're hoping the state will pay, which I'm reasonably sure because they did go to the extent of providing the funding. Uh, as I mentioned before, we were one of the first uh, municipalities in Ocean County to get the body worn cameras, and that was uh, obviously to protect the best interest of our police officers and the general public. Um, I can tell you, uh, I'll actually let Deputy Chief uh, Santucci tell you about the amount of... Uh, Six feet, please. Sorry. <laughs> okay, I'm going to have to process that one. Six feet, please. Six feet, is that what it was? Yeah. I'm going to make sure I'm silent. I don't want anybody to hear my ring. Um, you know, seriously, as uh, Deputy Chief had, had mentioned, uh, you know, poli uh, the complaints against police officers have significantly gone down uh, because once the person filing the complaint or uh, bringing up the complaint about an officer, and then we say, well, you know what, the officer's wearing a body camera, we'll just go to the camera and see what happened. Chief, you want to take it from there? Yeah, no, there, it has resolved a lot of issues. Or we're able to review certain cases where. Um, you know, when, where there's a complaint against an officer's demeanor or what have you, and uh, just makes it for an easier investigation and clear, more clear, like black and white, instead of he said, she said, so, which is kind of the point behind a little bit more accountability for everyone. Thank you. Uh, Through the chair, oh. Mayor, if I could just add to that, uh, today the uh, Attorney General, they're going to investigate uh, St. Louis on that shooting a year ago or so the young lady that uh, when the police went in they were shooting at him that she was killed but um, it sounded like the, all they're worried about is people's civil rights you know well police have the rights and they're investigating this woman which you know it's sad that she died but how about all the children and everything that have been shot in the last month nobody's investigating anything but they're making whatever is crap news they get on it you know, so here they're investigating at the Attorney General and uh, Minneapolis. You know, you guys, uh, you know, you're sure you have the backing of the, the mayor and council here 100 percent, but it's getting crazy. And congratulations. I know Wait, Saturday you become the chief. <laughs> well, and you're going to. Uh, <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> You'll yes. know it's better than number two. <laughs> All right, but, uh, thank you. Thanks. And that's on the uh, official <laughs> uh, uh, ten point one two. Uh, easy, he's surprised. <laughs> uh, next on the agenda is the authorization. Fred, you want to take that or John? I, I've got it. Thank you. Uh, yes, letter L authorization. This uh, this resolution was amended slightly uh, prior to the meeting. I thank the clerk for the quick change. It's actually an authorization to advertise and receive bids for building improvements, both to town hall and police headquarters. The mayor, when we were going over the agenda in his 
ever striving uh, towards efficiency, said we uh, need other improvements too. Let's make the uh, resolution more general. So that's on the official uh, agenda as item number 10.13. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, item M, commending Kim Gadano and Fulfill, which is the formal, formerly the food bank of Monmouth and Ocean County. I'm going to read the resolution. It says, uh, whereas Fulfill, the food bank, former food bank of Monmouth and Ocean County's mission is to alleviate hunger and build, build food security in Monmouth and Ocean County. And whereas food insecurity and hunger are issues on the rise within these counties, as well within the state and nation, especially due to the financial impacts of the COVID-19. And whereas Fulfill awarded $271,000 in pandemic relief funds to 50, 51 of its participating food pantries and feeding agency, there's a, uh, four of those uh, pantries right here in Berkeley Township that have uh, received funding uh, from Fulfill. And whereas Fulfill gave more than $2 million to agencies to increase during the COVID-19. Whereas pre-pandemic, Fulfill was feeding about 136,000 people, including 50,000 children, which has increased due to the pandemic, to 215,000 people, including 70,000 children during the pandemic. And whereas Fulfill created a restaurant partnership program that served more than 400,000 meals with more than 30 participating restaurants, which helped to keep businesses open while feeding the hungry. And that's what we do in that. Uh, this program uh, was uh, instituted here in Berkeley Township. So every Tuesday we give out meals at the recreation center in addition to uh, the crisis kits that we've been handing out uh, since last April. Uh, we've been doing it on a semi-regular basis at the Recreation Center, handing out uh, crisis kits. And uh, help keep business o open while feeding the hungry, whereas Fulfill has continued to provide food to local residents while adapting to local need and rapidly changing landscapes. And whereas much of Fulfill's recent success can be attributed to its leadership, name, namely its president and CEO, Kim Gadanya, which the mayor and township council was to recognize her for extraordinary efforts during this time. And whereas the mayor and township council wish to commend Fulfill for all its efforts in feeding the local communities, providing support and food and security during difficult times and for being a constant source of assistance for those in need. And whereas uh, the council, the township of Berkeley, state of New Jersey, that the governing body commend and sincerely thanks Fulfill uh, for its role in combating hunger and providing food and security. And also would like to thank uh, Kim Gadano uh, for her service and uh, to her for her service and her innovative programs that are helping uh, food insecurity, bridge the gap of food insecurity here in Ocean County. I was extremely disappointed uh, to learn of uh, uh, Kim is uh, stepping down uh, from Fulfill. Um, I could tell you, as a former member uh, sitting on a uh, food pantry, uh, the People's Pantry, uh, before we merged with Fulfill, uh, it's a very difficult, difficult job to do. Pre-pandemic, uh, you know, we got involved in the, the People's Pantry, you know, in the aftermath of Superstorm Sandy, and kind of kept it rolling up until, uh, you know, Fulfill taking over the, the reins of the pantry. But I could tell you, uh, I pick up the phone and uh, call Kim Gadano. I says, Kim, I have a couple families here. We need food for you uh, within uh, three to four hours. Working through our recreation department, uh, they get the food to us right away. Um, she was uh, instrumental in making sure that those crisis boxes uh, that we've been handing out, as I mentioned, uh, since the pandemic started, are, are delivered here or we pick them up. Um, and of course, as mentioned before, our uh, our pre-packaged uh, meals that we're doing every Tuesday. I could tell you, uh, without Kim's leadership, I don't know if any of this uh, could have been possible. Um, and, uh, you know, that's why I thought it'd be appropriate to uh, have a resolution on tonight, uh, you know, uh, recognize her for extraordinary efforts. And I'm going to also be following up with a letter to the to the board, uh, the board of trustees. And I know um, Councilman Bacchione also wanted to dovetail on this. Uh, Resolution. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, <clears throat> before I, I ask for, I'll make a motion for a resolution. Uh, I wanted to add to the talking points uh, regarding Fulfill and uh, Kim Guadagno while she was the CEO, CEO of Fulfill. Since March 13, 2020, 423,384 restaurant meals, 
3.535675 crisis box meals totaling 3,959,059 meals have been given out since Kim Guadagno has been the CEO of Fulfill. So I therefore, therefore want to make a resolution this evening to demand that the board of Fulfill not accept Kim Guadagno's letter of resignation and keep her on as the CEO. So I'll make that motion. Second. Roll call. Councilman Pacquion? Yes. Councilwoman Gingrich? I'd like to just make a, a point on the talking part before I vote. Uh, I've been involved with the food bank for eight years, and I've been there through a few other uh, people that had been running the food bank. At that time, it was called the Monmouth and Ocean County Food Bank. Then it merged and it became Fulfill, and Kim Cadano was now in charge. Uh, every month, this lady makes sure that in distributing the food for the seniors that all the essentials are given and they look forward to this. I, I really would like to make sure that she stays in charge because she knows what the people need and she's done a wonderful job. So I'll vote on this as I don't want to see her resign. Is that a yes? Yes. <laughs> yes. Councilman Burns? Okay. Councilman Signorelli? Yes. Councilman Buccio? Yes. Council President Cadano? Yes. Uh, before I move on to the, before we move on, I also want to thank uh, Councilwoman Sophia Gingrich because every month she has arranged to uh, fulfill to have a food truck at Holiday City at Berkeley Clubhouse uh, to hand out uh, as she mentioned the essentials. And she had, she started out with a bunch of volunteers, but she's been doing as she mentioned doing for a couple of years. So volunteers unfortunately dwindled down, but the new the the need has become greater. So, uh, it's a uh, councilwoman. You want to just say what, what date it is? It's always the fourth Friday of the month from 9 30 to 11 30 in the morning at 6 31 Jamaica Boulevard. So, if there's anybody out there who wants to volunteer, uh, see Councilwoman uh, Gingrich uh, after the meeting. We can always use some additional help in uh, helping distribute the food. But I just would be remiss if I did not recognize Councilwoman Gingrich for her work as well. Thank you. In, re Thank you, Mayor. in regards to letter N, and also under the clerks, if she'd be so kind, her letter C, I'd like to request um, that we move both of those for some discussion into closed session. <coughs> I've had some personnel and possible litigation issues arise um, on both issues, so I'd like the chance to discuss them in closed with the council and the chief, um, and then hopefully we come back out and still act on them. So that's for letter N, and I think Fred's going to take letter O. Letter O is uh, an award of a contract for two 10-ton air conditioning units for township buildings, and that is on the official agenda number 10.28. <clears throat> number five, comments from the mayor and the council. Mayor, do you have any comments? Yes. I just, I just want to add one more uh, comment, uh, is that, uh, that the um, Social Security Administration puts out a list of cost of living adjustments. Uh, since 1975, and just uh, just to put it in perspective, uh, talking about the New Jersey natural gas uh, increase again, in 2015 there was no zero. The cost of living adjustment for our seniors in 2015 was zero. In 2016 was 0 0.3. 2017 was 2%. 2018 was 2.8%. 2 2019 was 1.6%, and last year, 2020, was a big 1.3%. So just to put things in perspective of, uh, you know, the rate payers who are going to have to fund uh, these outrageous uh, increases if they're allowed to go through. And, you know, the, the majority of our, our seniors' uh, primary income is Social Security. Very few of them have alternate means of uh, revenue. Uh, this is a problem, and uh, just to work in something else, as you know, it's very difficult uh, to get volunteers in our emergency services out in Holiday City. We have three uh, wonderful uh, volunteer first aid, squad, first aid squads, Holiday City at Berkeley, Holiday Heights, and Silver Ridge Park, and over the years, their membership has uh, been decreasing at a rapid pace because it's been difficult to get volunteers because you know, most seniors are still, uh, most of the residents um, either are getting up there in age and can't volunteer, 
or they have to they have to continue to work and they just don't have the time to volunteer so it's all uh, related uh, one way or another so uh, this past uh, comments I just want to thank the members of the council who came out uh, we had an Eagle Scout uh, award uh, yesterday another two weeks we have uh, another uh, two Eagle Scouts we'll be recognizing um, I know Councilman Burns is going to touch on this during his comments uh, but we had uh, uh, three new uh, businesses open up along the Bayville corridor there was a grand opening of two of those uh, taste uh, which is a coffee uh, bowls and uh, uh, what a smoothie uh, place opened up and of course an, an old iconic, iconic uh, an old iconic uh, pizza parlor came back even though under different ownership uh, pies place uh, opened up in, in town and both of those businesses were extremely busy uh, throughout the weekend uh, there was another new restaurant uh, that opened up uh, U house uh, John uh, councilman back and I uh, met the owners and we're going to schedule a uh, ribbon cutting with them as well and uh, you know despite the pandemic you know there are businesses popping up in Berkeley Township and uh, you know we're very uh, uh, very happy to welcome them here you know uh, even though it's we're in the middle of a pandemic you know there's more businesses today than there was six years ago uh, along the route 9 corridor and there's more to come on a regular basis because my office gets contacted uh, by uh, people who are looking to do business in Berkeley uh, what, what's the procedure they have to go where do they have to go who do they have to talk to um, you know Berkeley Township is a very desirable place to live uh, we have low taxes our uh, youth groups are are well funded well representative we have great great senior communities here in town and uh, if you talk to any real estate agent they'll tell you that the average uh, house for sale in Berkeley Township uh, is gone between seven and ten days and it's always uh, above the uh, list price so that's very promising uh, you know for the future so uh, our concert series as I mentioned at our uh, last meeting uh, the press release went out today confirming all of our all of our bands it's going to be at Veterans Park uh, last year during the pandemic we only allowed we were only allowed outdoors up to 500 people so we kept it limited to just Berkeley Township residents only uh, we were advised that the governor is going to start increasing it uh, by Memorial Day uh, the limits uh, should be uh, increased significantly so right now we're just going to keep the concerts open to any anybody who wants to attend and then we'll uh, adjust accordingly uh, when the governor sends out another uh, executive door order or information on the outdoor gathering and uh, that's all I had right now uh, council president but I'm sure when everybody speaks I might have a few things to say. <laughs> thank you mr. mayor councilman back uh, thank you mr. president I think it's worthwhile mentioning three of the resolutions that we are uh, looking at this evening. Uh, first is the uh, the natural gas increase, and uh, I think I want to encourage my colleagues to vote in favor of opposing the natural gas increase and vote in favor of this resolution tonight as uh, as we present it. The other resolution I, I think is worthwhile mentioning again is the um, the, the bids for modernizing our police headquarters. Uh, I think we have to send our police officers out with all the modern equipment to keep themselves safe and the community safe. And I am definitely in favor and hope my colleagues are in favor uh, of supporting that resolution. I can't imagine Berkeley Township with no police officers. So we, we, uh, we always wish you guys well and, and um, uh, we thank you for keeping the community safe. The third one I want to mention is the uh, fulfill resolution to keep Kim Guadagno uh, as the CEO, uh, 3,959,059 meals were given out under her watch in 13 months. I mean, those people who received those meals, I'm sure, are very appreciative. That's a lot of meals, and it would be a, a sad day to lose her as the CEO of Fulfill. So I appreciate uh, the consideration of my colleagues in, in approving that resolution, resolution as well. Thank you, Mr. President. That's all I have. Thank you, Councilman Back Young. Councilwoman Gingrich? I have nothing more at this time. Thank you. Councilman Burns? Uh, just a couple items. Uh, Councilman uh, 
Mike sent me a uh, thing which has been going around about Vice President Harris, which he's doing, talking about the veterans, about how they pamper the veterans. And um, I'm sure he'll add when we get to it. And uh, she said they should all get up and stand on their own two feet. I don't think she's looked around Walter Reed too much. Some of them don't have two feet. But uh, she wants to take the money and uh, send it south. So uh, I know Mike is going to uh, want to add to that. Um, getting around, I, I talked to different uh, uh, jet owners and plane owners. And uh, this is the best airport around. And there's no hotel, no restaurant. And I know the engineers are working on the uh, Pinelands review for the rest of the area here. Um, is there a way we can apply for some type of an exemption to get a hotel? Because uh, Teterboro is like six years away from getting a hangar there and big corporations. This would be a great place. The county just added a, a hangar there, I think, uh, Mayor, for three and a half million or something. But, you know, here we have the best airport around and there's no hotel or uh, restaurant or anything. All right. So maybe, uh, Jim, we could look at some kind of an exemption. I know you don't want me to talk to him. <laughs> um, the other night, uh, Manitou Park uh, had, took delivery on uh, two small mini pumpers, uh, fire trucks. One will be housed at the old firehouse and one will be uh, housed at the large one. Uh, these trucks will, will they'll allow them to uh, get off and running with three men on a truck. There's water on the truck, rescue equipment, and uh, they'll be able to get out a lot faster. There was a uh, major fire on my street the other night, a house burnt, and uh, if it wasn't for the uh, the firemen and the EMS and the police, the house would have been totaled out. But uh, with the wind and everything, as soon as they got there, they knocked it down, and it was uh, quite a fire. A lot of towns are having trouble manning uh, fire trucks and whatever. We we're fortunate. We you know they're all filled up, and we have the best. So. Uh, that money we spend on equipment, Mayor, every year is, is going to good use. Um, with the police, uh, I know the mayor, uh, the governor, um, they did away with the civil service rule for uh, the top ten, and you can uh, pass down through to, uh, I guess, to pick a minority or whatever if you want. But uh, by doing that, they took away the veterans' exemption for the uh, first in. So I know uh, Lauren said we can't do an ordinance on that, but uh, can we do a resolution to the state that uh, they reinstate that somehow? Because uh, you can just now bypass, go down to number eight, number 10, whatever. So uh, if we could uh, later on do a resolution to... Uh Were you making a motion? Yeah, okay. That uh, veterans remain... Uh, uh, status on the civil service. I'll second. Councilman Bacchione. Yes. Councilman Gingrich. Yes. Councilman Burns. Yes. Councilman Cigarelli. Yes. Councilman Buscio. Yes. Councilman President Padano. Yes. Um, like the mayor said, uh, they attended uh, three new uh, business openings. There's a few more coming out real quick. But uh, Route 9, you know, you can go down now, and I don't think you can count the empty stores on one hand. There are a couple empty, but uh, one is going to become an office building, the other a donut shop. But there's a lot of stuff on the books. Um, I've been down to uh, Hickory Lane. There's more houses going up there if anybody wants to take a ride to see what's going on down there. Um, I think we're getting to the point where we're overdeveloping and we're getting ahead of the state. You know, we, I think we need to tell the state to get on board with uh, Route 9 and, uh, you know, Hickory to Lane. So if there's something that, uh, Mayor, we could do there to uh, get the state to catch up to us. You know, we've looked a long time to get this development. And, you know, like we said the other day, I told you it's nice to have no parking uh, spots on Route 9 with all the business coming. All right. Um, Airbnbs, I know there's not much we can do about them, but uh, I know there's one on the next street that's uh, for $400 a night, you know, 
in the uh, residential area. So, you know, some of them are run pretty good. Others are, they could just be sandy houses that are left standing. So if we could uh, research that and see what we can do with Airbnbs. And uh, the last uh, month, we've been playing whack-a-mole with the uh, DEP. Every time we stick our head up to do a uh, project, the DEP is right there to stop us. Not that uh, I want to complain about inheriting, but we've inherited a lot of um, condemned environmental sites that we've been trying to clean up. We just started to do the dog park and the uh, red flag went up that uh, we need to do a survey because it was a, uh, a sewer plant. So now they're looking at that, but you know, we have other areas. Uh, Main Street, we had a project on the table there and uh, we've been going around and around and I know the, uh, the engineers finally have it uh, where it's doable. Um, last week we uh, met with um, Alan and uh, Mr. LeCompte on uh, drainage problems on uh, Bayview, uh, down on Narragansett, and other areas that uh, they've had their survey teams out, um, getting ready to do some projects there. And Butler is ready to come out for bid, I think, real quick. I don't know if the engineer wants to add something on his report on, uh, you know, the areas. But um, I don't know. Every time I, I turn the news on with uh, what's going on in the country, it's, it's sickening. All right. Thank you. That's all. Thank you, Councilman Burns. That's enough. Thank you. You did great. Councilman Signorelli. <laughs> I talked about everything. <laughs> I don't work. <laughs> the, uh, yeah, I want to thank the Mayor and Council for uh, support on uh, S3584 and A4979. Uh, uh, those two bills will provide great relief to the senior communities in getting us open again. Also, uh, we're going to be looking shortly to uh, support the mayor and council for a, uh, a lawsuit that we're going to be bringing against the state, uh, and I'll get that information over to you later this week. It should be filed either t uh, tomorrow or Wednesday. Uh, it'll be against uh, the, uh, the governor and the, uh, the state of New Jersey for uh, the restrictions they put on senior communities. and. Uh, in line with just general public, and we're not, we're closed communities. So I said, there's, there's a little nuance to it, but uh, the mayor, I've talked to the mayor about it, and uh, we, we hope to get support from the mayor and council on that also. Uh, now, in a matter that's near and dear to my heart that Jim spoke to, and um, I respect Jim because he's one of those guys that had boots yeah, on the sorry. ground. Um, I was not. Uh, this, this comment by Camilla Harris regarding the uh, the veterans is almost sickening, and if any of you want to go online and read it, uh, you should. Um, it was actually it was actually put out, and it was uh, I think Jack uh, Citarelli, who's uh, running for Republican candidate for the governor for the governorship, uh, placed it, uh, you know, actually posted it. And when I read it, my heart stopped. Uh, this woman has no respect at all for our veterans, and uh, I mean to the point where she pretty much tells them go out and get a job and the hell with what you did for this country. Um, I just can't tolerate that. So, uh, you know, in, in line with what Jim is saying, uh, th this stuff's got to stop. The way this country is going right now is just is not a good thing. And the only way it's gonna, it's the only way it's gonna continue to get better, is if it's if it's done from the base, right from here, from the ground level up, and that's from municipalities right on up. Um, you got to keep your municipality solid, and then we move to the governor, and then the next thing we do is we move to the federal government. But this kind of talk about veterans, people who have gone out and served their country, many of them who have lost limbs and, uh, you know, can't work. She, her last statement just threw me right off the edge where she said, so here's a message to you, soldier boys, go get a job. You know, it, it's just not right. This is just not right. And if I read this whole thing to you, I'd have people crying in the audience. Um, so read it at home when you get a chance. All right, thank you. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Uh, Councilman Bush, yeah? Just, um, just following up from last month on Route 9 and New Jersey Natural Gas, I know we passed a resolution and I'm still getting, you know, residents saying, hey, what's going on with the paving? Do we hear from New Jersey Natural Gas? Kylie Construction, what's, you know? Yes. Uh, oh, you did? 
Okay. I'm sorry. Yes, Councilman. The um, we got responses back from both. Just phone calls from the contractors. The state has expanded their contract so that they are, as soon as they're done with their pipe, going to be paving the side of the road that they worked on, complete from the center down to the shoulder. On that side, they had gone right back out in response to the resolution and done some um, better patching of the areas they, where they've already done, if anybody's noticed. So, um, and they anticipate that the um, southern section, south of Butler Boulevard, will be done hopefully by the end of this month. They're, they're looking to be paving. And before uh, Memorial Day, they're, they're hoping that the north, they think the north yeah, end okay. is ready too. So right. um, the push was and resolution were helpful. We got responses from both contractors working with us. All right, good update. Thanks. That's all I have at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Bushow. Um, just real quick, I wanted to jump on what the mayor said about the summer concert series. <laughs> And all our recreation programs, all you need to do is to go onto our Berkeley Recreation site and you can find out about the concert series. You can find out about the drive-in movie theaters. You can find out about our farmer's markets, which we did have a soft opening for our farmer's market over the last two Tuesdays at the Berkeley Rec Center. Um, it'll be there again for the next two Tuesdays. Our farmer's markets do open up full-time. Um, the South Seaside Park will open up May 10th and the Bayville one will open up full-time with all the vendors on May 11th. So if you ever need any information about what's going on with the town with any of those programs, just go to our Berkeley Rec site. We still have beach badges for sale. Um, also, I'm happy to say that unlike last spring, this spring all our kids are back playing sports. The Little League, the softball, the flag football, the soccer are all back running. So that's good news. Um, our elementary schools are five days a week. The middle school and the high school started half going back five days this week and next week the other half will be back five days a week. So all our schools will be back in the next two weeks. All the kids will be back going full time. Half days, but full time, at least they're going every day. And being a teacher, the virtual is, is it, it helped get through, but it's not, the kids need to be in school. They need to see their friends and um, we need to get them caught up in everything that they miss. So it looks like we're all going the right direction. So spring's here and um, enjoy it. That's all I have to say. Um, so let's move on here to number six discussion by, oh, Mayor, do you have anything else you wanna say? We're at the end. <laughs> oh, that end? <laughs> oh, I'm glad you're finally admitting some things. <laughs> Number six, discussion by in Township Engineer. Thank you, Council President. Uh, item A, award of contract for 23rd Avenue outfall decking to T.R. Weniger Incorporated in the amount of $84,490. On the official item number 10.16. Item B, award of contract for 2021 mill and overlay phase one to Black Rock Enterprises LLC in the amount of $163,000. On the official item number 10.17. The roads included with that are Kahala Terrace from Guadalajara to the end, Alpha Terrace from Guadalajara Drive to the end, Callaloo Court from Freeport Drive to the end, Kelowna Court from Freeport Drive to the end, and Panama Court from Freeport Boulevard to the end. Uh, award of 2000 award of contract for 2021 road materials contract to Walter R. Earl and Corp Corporation and authorized rebidding on the official item number 10.18. Uh, the project was bid and we only got bid for uh, road materials for 2021. We only got bid for two items. So we're hoping to get bids from additional companies for other items. So that's why we're requesting a rebid on that. Uh, item D, street vacation application, portion of Seabrook Avenue between Smith Street and Falkenberg Drive, block 424, lots 1, 2, and 10, block 407, lot 7, applicant Thomas J. Miller. Item E, award of contract. Oh, sorry. I need to make a motion to approve that. Their recommendation is to go ahead and approve it. We need a motion to go ahead. So and, uh, Should I make a motion to go ahead and approve it? So moved. Second. Second. Roll call. Wait. Sorry. Okay, sorry. Roll call. 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 Ro
Roll call. Councilman Bacchione? Yes. Councilman Gingrich? Yes. Councilman Burns? Yes. Councilman Signorelli? Yes. Councilman Buccio? Yes. Council President Bethania? Yes. Now evil. <laughs> Okay, item E, award of contract for 2020 road improvements projects to Earl Asphalt Company in the amount of $416,813.13 on the official item number 10.19. And item F, award of contract for sanitary sewer connection at Veterans Park on the official item number 10.27. Well, yeah, I was going to say, in addition, um, as Mr. Burns requested, uh, we did do survey work at Narragansett Avenue. Um, we surveyed Narragansett, uh, a portion of Avalon, a portion of o Ocean Port, and a portion of Longport. We're in the process of preparing base mapping to review the drainage issues that they have out there. Uh, we're hoping to have a little more information in a couple of weeks to uh, start making some recommendations. Thank you. But through to chair for the engineer, uh, people that uh, don't know South Seaside Park, that uh, that decking is going to be over the uh, outfall line from Route 35. On um, that Route 35 project was done right after Sandy, and uh, the problem with that is when it doesn't rain for a few days, it still pumps. So it's not pumping drainage from Route 35. It's actually pumping groundwater. And when you're in Glen Cove and the flag is pointed directly at that outfall, all of Glen Cove is covered with soap suds. So uh, I took samples. I remember last year, um, Mr. McGrath, I know that uh, Tom Bellinato, we went over there and took some samples inside the pipe and it, it was soap. So the problem was they never really put the uh, proper gaskets in the pipe coming through and that's the uh, groundwater so I did talk to the Board of Health Dan uh, Regney and uh, he's going to keep an eye on that for us and I, I did take some uh, samples but while you're out there John if you if you notice you know it hasn't rained in a week but there's still water coming out of that pump that's the problem thank Understood. you Understood. thank you thank you number seven discussion by Township Clerk Item A is to authorize a refund of a duplicate payment of mercantile license fee. The um, applicant went online and made the payment through Municipay and then went on the next month and did it a second time. So I'm asking to refund the $25 for the second payment. And that's on the official item 10.20. Item B is fireman appointments. Uh, number one is Christopher Boyle to Bayville Fire Company. And number two is Tyler Volick. To the Pinewall Pioneer Fire Company. The backgrounds have been completed and there's nothing to hold them from serving as a uh, fire. So they're on the official item 10.21 and 10.22. And item C we've asked to put into closed session. So that's all I have. Great. Thank you. Number eight, meeting is now open for public comments. Before we open the meeting for public comments, we ask that you remain at the podium. Um, any documents that you have or would like to share with the council can be passed forward. I am going to call from the list first for anybody that signed the list. Um, after that, I'll ask if there's anybody else that would like to speak. You do have 10 minutes to speak when you're up here. So first we have... Um, Five. 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 <laughs> All right, we, 10 minutes? That's what it says on here. Five, Five by ordinance, but if anybody goes over, they can always come back up. We'll figure it out. Uh, first, we have Danny Kessel. Yes. I hope I said that right. Yeah. Close. Good. How you doing? Just yeah, state yeah, your yeah. name. Just state your name when you come up to the yeah. podium and your um, address, please. My name is Daniel Kessel. I uh, live at Seven Bell Street in uh, Holiday City with my parents right now. But I am the owner of Bud Hub NJ, and um, I would like to work with you guys in opening a dispensary, considering 59.5 percent of your residents voted in favor of it. Um, I'm already op uh, operating a, a delivery service. I sell stickers and gift the marijuana. Um, which is a loophole in the law, but it's allowed. Um, and you see, I do a, um, a lot of business in, in this town, and I think the re residents would benefit from it. And he speaks a lot about veterans. I saw a lot of older people and veterans, stickers to them in Holiday City. They've gotten off of their medications. 
have texted me, I could show you texts of them saying, I've been able to go around the block for the first time without my medication. Some of these things, these people can use these things. And there is a lot of storefronts open on Route 9, and it will bring business, but it'll be run just like any other, any other business on Route 9. You have a liquor store on every corner. Um, the, nothing is going to happen. I agree, the law with the kids needs to be changed. But you can't ruin the entire thing because one thing in the, in the bill is not good. That will be rectified, I'm sure. But let's not destroy an entire business when your town supports it and currently loves the service I'm providing them now. And I think that this town, you guys have industrial park. Nobody's trying to put a grow on Route 9 or anything like that. We have plenty of land over here. I could buy a building and we can keep it away from everybody. It could be done properly. And I live in the town. I'm looking to buy a house in Bayville. I would like to keep it out of the corporation's hands. Do you want these bit? They're already making a killing everywhere. Let's keep it local. I will hire local people. My stickers are made in South Tom's River. So now he has business. My sweatshirts are made in Tom's River. So now he has business. Everybody can win in this situation. You just have to look at the benefits. If you get your 2% on a million dollars, that's 20 grand. Store's gonna pump 20 million easy. I know the numbers. That's on 20 million, that's about 200 grand. There's a lot of things this town used, could use. I know they want a new boat ramp. I know they want a camping program that mimics Point Pleasant. Cannabis can do these things and other programs for the town if you guys would be open to it. I would love to work with you guys. There's no other place I want to be than in Bayville. This is, you guys are my family, extended family in this Bayville, and I would love to work with you guys. And I have the financing, and I have outside financing that would help me if you guys were willing to back me when I go in front of the CRC to get the permits. So I would really appreciate it, you know, I mean, considering that, I know you guys keep dwelling on the children thing and that will be fixed. It's just a matter of time, give it time. Nothing happens overnight. It took a long time, I mean, and it is what it is, but it will be fixed. And I know law enforcement isn't happy with it, but even the cannabis taxes can help things like those cameras that he wants. We, cannabis taxes can do that for you. There's a lot of things that this town could use from, you know, and education. We can let, let's get programs for the kids with the tax money so we don't have to worry about the kids smoking weed. It's not, there's things we can do to curtail. I guarantee you, if you let me open a shop, I will not sell to any kids. That will not happen. But like, we can have a grow out in the Pine Barrens and a storefront run like any other business. If you guys were even willing, I heard him talk about taking you guys to go show you something. I don't think you'd be willing to come out of state with me and see other programs, but I have no owners and they would show you. It's run like any other business in a strip mall. Nothing, the world doesn't end because somebody went in and bought a bag of weed. I mean, we have enough problem with the heroin in this town that those people could benefit from maybe getting on cannabis. A lot of veterans he talks about don't have access to this because they can't get on the program because the veterans, uh, the VA doesn't approve of it. There's things that we can do to help you know, I mean, if you need me to bring witnesses in, I could bring plenty of residents in from the area that could prove to you. But we can all win in this situation. And I think that if we came together, we could do great things for the area. So I would you know, you. appreciate, you know, maybe a meeting in the future with someone so we can get something rolling if it's a possibility. You know, so I would love to open up here. So that's where I stand. All right, well, thank John, you. maybe you can get his number and contact information. We can get, get some literature from him and some uh, information. I'll give you my cell phone number, 609-389-2025. Uh, Got it. And you can just reach out to me, just call my cell phone, or have the um, township clerk call my cell phone, and I will clear my schedule for you guys, and we will, we will clear out. You know? reach out. After this, I'm going to deliver stickers after this, right here, in Bayville, to all your residents. So, uh, Through the chair. Is it, I know this is in the infant stage here, but is there going to be licenses uh, required for the sales or? Uh, yes. So they broke it down into very compartmentalized. There's going to be a delivery, a, um, a license for um, concentrates, like an extraction permit, a growing, a storefront, a delivery, um, wholesale, which would be uh, owner to owner, transfer of um, bulk quantities. And then there's micro licenses, which are unlimited. 
And that's only 2,500 square feet. That's not very much room to put a grow in. It's. I know right now we outlawed the sale of uh, Kratom in town. Yeah, I have Kratom. And the, that's, that's the last thing we want to see is a lot of vape stores yeah, and I'm not wanting to check stand cash up. I don't stand up here and think all drugs should be legal. I'm not saying heroin and all that should be sold. I don't agree with that. I, no, there's a right place one for of a dispensary. One of these officers saved my life. I celebrated three years clean exactly a month ago. Officer Shoemaker, sh Shoemaker? Yeah. Narcan me with uh, two or three shots that carried me out on a, a sheet from my house. And my parents, they thought I was dead. So, and I thanked him personally for that. And that wasn't enough to get me to stop doing drugs. Two weeks later, I woke up and decided it was over. And then I started Bud Hub with a $450 check working at the Macy's Shoe Department in the Women's Department. And I started Bud Hub with that in 2019. Um, but it just shows you that I'm, this has helped me stay clean. It's given me things in life now that I've gone places that I never thought I would go. And it can give this town things that you guys don't have funding for right now. Because there's a lot of people come down here for the summer. And there's a lot of money to be brought in. You know, it's not always about the money, but I know as politicians, you listen to the money, not so much what it can do for you. So I sometimes speak to your wallet because you're going to listen to that. So it can bring a lot of money. It will be a benefit. And at the end of the day, 59.5% of your residents wanted, wanted it. And that's really all that matters. You're going to go against what your residents wanted. I mean, that's what I'll it, reach out so we could have some. Well, we'll reach out to you and then we'll take Thank care you. from there. I okay? appreciate it. I'm all right. Thank you very much for your time. We really appreciate it. Um, next, I have Donna Amon. I hope I said that correctly. I did? Huh, I'm two for two. <laughs> Just state your name and your address, please, ma'am. Donna Amon, 33 East Longport Avenue in Bayville. Um, I think some of you hit on why we're here already. We're looking for like an update um, for the Narragansett um, Bay and Longport. And uh, Councilman Burns, you, you were you gave a you stated a list before um, what what was being done and if you could just repeat that just so some of the people weren't here yeah i can uh, you know tell you what i know and then uh the engineer will can i bring you up to date but uh on the end of uh avalon where uh bob winward used to live there that that whole area there is deteriorating so they're they've just come up with uh some blankets and some restoring where Narragansett makes the turn. They're looking at putting a uh, bulkhead there to uh, where Public Works put that little drain to go out. Mm -hmm. Well, sometimes it comes in. <laughs> right. And um, the other problem there is, is some of the residents, the houses are so much lower than the road. You know, like just coming in, I would say, let's raise the road six inches and, you know, we'll cut the, uh, the nuisance storms in half. Mm. But, uh, you know, they're going to have to be addressed. Mm -hmm. And I know that uh, they've been coming in and cleaning because down at Narragansett, there's a pretty extensive drainage system in there that was, uh, wasn't cleaned out. And they cleaned that out about a month ago. But uh, if the engineer uh, wants to add, I know they were out uh, surveying. Thank you, Mr. Burns. Yes, we uh, surveyed uh, Narragansett all the way from Bayview uh all the way up to avalon and avalon uh to uh the block after seabright um we checked we we paid particular uh, attention to the the curve as mr mr burns uh discussed uh what we want to do is we want to see what the grades of the roads are there we want to see what the grade of the bulkhead is uh at that one uh borough pro uh, township property mm -hmm. We want to see if we can actually outlet a pipe there, raise the road up a little bit and outlet a pipe there uh, to possibly alleviate some of that drainage situation there. Uh, with regard to Narragansett, we, we also shot uh, the intersection of Longport. We shot all the drainage that exists there. I guess that was done about 12 years ago. And what we're looking to do is see what the elevations are at the grates there to see if maybe we, there's something that can be done with that also. Uh, also, uh, at the channel at the end of Avalon, uh, that slope is starting to deteriorate. Uh, we did, we already sent the surveyors out. They already have survey information that we have to do base mapping from. 
Uh, we're looking to basically restabilize that slope from the beginning of the groin all the way to the property at the, uh, the intersection of Avalon and Seabright. Well, I, I appreciate everything this whole uh, mayor and your, your council are, are doing for us. I can't thank you enough. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for your patience. Oh, yes. no. It's a, it's a tough situation because it, it, the jurisdiction's are over two municipalities, so we got to work together with Ocean Gate to get it all fixed. But well, I, was, I was trying to keep a record, like, of the flooding, and since I'm trying to keep a record, it's not really flooding that much right now. You know, it's like going to the dentist, you know yeah. what I mean? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, through the chair, I know you guys are going to kill me later. While you're doing the surveys, I noticed there's some houses that are actually pumping water out to the street. There's no way they can uh, do a house finished floor elevation while they're shooting, can they? Uh, to, the to identify the houses right that are Right now low. the survey work is completed for the first phase. Uh, after meeting out there, uh, we're probably gonna be sending the survey crews out for additional information, because I know um, members of the Waterway Commission that we met out there with discussed possibly extending the beach out to the 1970s uh, high water line. Right. We can shoot whatever uh, finished floors uh, you think have an issue. Yeah, the ones that are uh, going to be impacted, whatever mm -hmm. we do to the road, because there are grants available to, uh, you know, do the roads. We're going right. to see what we need to do as far as elevations. Then we're going to kind of work outwards from the roadway to see how Good. far back we have to go. Thank you. That's my last through the chair. <laughs> I've heard that before. <laughs> uh, next up is Marilyn Miller. If we could just have your name and your address, ma'am, please. Correct. <clears throat> Marilyn Miller, 38 St. Croix Street, Holiday City, Berkeley. And I guess my general subject will be titled Police Department. I've interacted with three police uh, officers over the past couple of weeks. Uh, two of the incidents were because of people dying in and around me. There was at least five deaths and uh, two empty houses that uh, <coughs> I had a call in because it might be suspicious. And I was coming here oh, to commend Chief Karen, and I'm too late. Um, also, uh, the, the police department itself. And we talk about veterans, and uh, the mayor knows how I had this soft spot for Al and he died two weeks after uh, his 100th birthday. World War II vet, please. And uh, it was the police that at least sent two prowl cars when we tried to do something for Al. So I'm sorry I'm losing Karen. She was, I was considered her little friend. And I want to, <laughs> well, this is what I want to say to you. Two of the policemen said to me, if you need anything, because there is a situation. I am pushing 80. I'm all by myself. I don't have anybody around to help me. I'm a sitting duck to bullies. <clears throat> so I want you to know me. I am not like everybody else. I care and all these statements that are in here about caring. I care. Uh, I also want to commend our sanitation workers because people take them for granted or they think they are their s servants and they're not. I, my heart was breaking today when I watched Andy and he had to do this because if he didn't do it, he would get in trouble. A person at 25 St. Croix had perfectly good furniture. I checked it out. And he had to put it in the truck and destroy it. It breaks my heart. It could have gone to Salvation Army, could have gone to Vietnam Vets. Sandy, that, that store uh, on, uh, what, 37 there? It broke my heart. So um, I, I'm here to commend people. You're not servants. 
your services, and that's different. Uh, so that's what I want to say. That's my two cents. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Miller. I appreciate that. your name that. is, by the way? Uh, Deputy Chief Santucci. 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 Okay. Um, now, excuse me. Santucci, yeah, so. Kevin, little, little <laughs> I was going to say, excuse me, I'm an amateur genealogist, so excuse me for saying this. Kevin Irish Santucci Italian. Right? And my middle name is German. <laughs> good, good. Thank you. I'm getting hungry all of a sudden. <laughs> Is there anybody else in the audience who'd like to come up to speak? Anyway? All right. Uh, to May I have a motion to close the public portion of the meeting? So moved. Thank you. Roll call. Oh, all in favor? Sorry. Aye. Aye. <laughs> we're all, we're all. Number nine, resolution 21-179R regarding closed session. Whereas we are about to discuss matters which deal with one or more of the statutory exceptions under the New Jersey Open Public Meetings Act, which allows exclusion of the public during said discussions, and whereas the matters to be discussed relate to one, personnel, two, contractual, three, attorney claim privilege. Whereas this may be disclosed to the public at a time when the necessity for confidentiality no longer exists or within six months or less from the date hereof. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Township Council of the Township of Berkeley County of Ocean, State of New Jersey, as follows. One, that the Township Council shall retire into executive session where the public shall be excluded and where said matters shall be discussed and formal action may be taken with regard thereto. Two, that the minutes of this executive session shall be closed from public inspection and shall so remain until the reason for confidentiality ceases to exist or upon formal action by the Township Council at an official meeting within six months or less. Three, that at the termination of said executive session, the meeting would be adjourned. May I have a motion to approve? Motion. Second. Roll call. Uh, Councilman Bacchione. Yes. Councilwoman Gingrich. Yes. Councilman Burns. Yes. Councilman Signorelli. Yes. Councilman Buccio. Yes. Council President Guadagno. Yes. Good evening. This is the official meeting of April 26, 2021. Ladies and gentlemen, pursuant to the applicable portions of the New Jersey Open Public Meetings Law, adequate notice of this meeting has been given. This meeting is posted on the bulletin board located in the corridor of this building, published in the newspaper on January 13, 2021. Roll call. Councilman Bacchione. Here. Councilwoman Gingrich. Present. Councilman Burns. Here. Councilman Signorelli. I'll be here. Councilman Buccio. Here. Councilman Gross is absent this evening. Councilman, Council President Guadagno. Here. Number three, approval of the official minutes for March 22nd, 2021. We have a motion, please. Make that motion. Second. Second. Roll call. Okay. Yeah. Councilman Bacchione? Yes. Councilwoman Gingrich? Present. Councilman Burns? Here. No. <laughs> yes. Present. <laughs> On the minutes. Yes? yes. Councilman Burns? Yes. Councilman Signorelli. Yes. Councilman Buccio. Present. No, here. Yes. <laughs> Council President Guadagno. <laughs> yes. Number four, approval of the monthly reports as listed. May I move motion, please? Motion. Second. Second. Roll call. Councilman Bacchione. Yes. Yeah. Councilwoman Gingrich. Yes. Councilman Burns. Yes. Councilman Signorelli. Yes. Councilman Buccio. Yes. Council President Guadagno. Yes. Number five, res resolution 21-180R. Regarding bills and payroll, may I have a motion, please? Motion to approve. Second. Second. It. Roll call. Councilman Bacchione? Yes. Councilwoman Gingrich? Yes. Councilman Burns? Yes. Councilman Signorelli? Yes. Councilman Buccio? Yes. Council President Guadagno? Mm -hmm. Yes. Number six, public hearing on Ordinance 21 11 OA regarding the Ordinance of the Township of Berkeley County of Ocean State of New Jersey, authorizing the vacation of portions of Northern Boulevard, Keith, and Western Boulevard abutting Block 530, Lots 1, 2, and 17. The meeting is now open for comments on the ordinance. Seeing none, may I have a motion to close the public hearing and adopt? Motion to close and adopt. Second? Second. Roll call it. Councilman Bacchione? Yes. Councilman, Councilwoman Gingrich? Yes. Councilman Burns? Yes. Councilman Signorelli? Yes. Councilman Buccio? Yep. Councilman President Guadagno? Yes. Number seven, public hearings on Ordinance 21-12-OA regarding Ordinance of the Township of Berkeley, County of Ocean, State of New Jersey, authorizing the sale of Block 1403, Lots 1 through 20 on the municipal tax map to Mark and Deborah Stackpole in accordance with the provisions of NJSA 40A, colon, 12-13B and NJSA 40A, colon, 12-13.2. Balsam Drive, $17,100. The meeting is now open for comments on the ordinance. Seeing none, may I have a motion to close the public hearing and adopt? Motion to close and adopt. Second. 
Second. Roll call. Councilman Bacchion? Yes. Councilwoman Gingrich? Yes. Councilman Burns? Yes. Councilman Signorelli? Yes. Councilman Buccio? Yes. Council President Guadagno? Yes, number eight, introduction to ordinance 21-13-OA regarding ordinance of the Township of Berkeley County of Ocean, State of New Jersey, authorizing the vacation of portions of Chadwick Avenue abutting block 1103, lot 2, and block 1104, lot 1. May I have a motion to introduce? Motion to introduce. Second? Second. Second. Roll call. Councilman Bacchion? Yes. Councilwoman Gingrich? Yes. Councilman Burns? Yes. Councilman Signorelli? Yes. Councilman Buccio? Yes. Council President Guadagno. Yes. Number nine, introduction order is 21-14-OA, regarding an ordinance of the Township of Berkeley County of Ocean State of New Jersey, amending the Township Code so as to amend various sections of Chapter 7, entitled Traffic Butler Boulevard, exit to Bayview Avenue. May I have a motion to introduce? Motion to introduce. Second? Second. Roll call. Councilman Bacchion? Yes. Councilwoman Gingrich? Yes. Councilman Burns? Yes. Councilman Signorelli? Yep. Councilman Buccio? Yes. Council President Guadagno? Yes. Number 12, Resolution 21-181-R, regarding consent agenda. May I have a motion to approve item? As, as, as revised. As revised. As revised because we took off... Uh, 21, it's number 15, Resolution 21-196. All right. So as revised, may I have a motion to approve item numbers 1 through 24, Resolutions 182-205. Motion to approve. Second. Second it. Roll call. Councilman Bacchion? Yes. Councilman Gingrich? Yes. Councilman Burns? Yes. Councilman Signorelli? Yes. Councilman Buccio? Yes. Council President Guadagno? Yes. All right, we have a bunch of items to um, add on. The first is Resolution 21-210R, authorization to advertise for bids for mobile food vendors and lease of building at the Colonel property. Motion. Second. 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 Thank you. Roll call. Councilman Bacchion? Yes. Councilwoman Gingrich? Yes. Councilman Burns? Yes. Councilman Signorelli? Yes. Councilman Buccio? Yes. Council President Guadagno? Yes. A resolution 21-211R, appointing a Chief of Police. Make a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Second. Really, um, I'll second. Yeah, on the motion, mm -hmm. I just want to read some, read some things in the, in the record. Um, before we vote on Kevin, uh, I just, you know, obviously the, the recommendation from administration is that we make uh, Kevin Santucci effective May 1st as our chief. But I just want to, um, I just want to say publicly, as a uh, publicly, I just want to thank uh, Karen DeMichael for the record. Publicly, I'd like to thank Chief Karen DeMichael for her 25 years of service in 10 years, the last 10 years as chief of police. She leaves behind a long list of accomplishments and first for Berkeley Township. She was first hired in 1995 as Berkeley's first female police officer, and the chief rose through the ranks, promoted to sergeant in 2001. 2005, she was promoted to lieutenant, and from there, she was in 2011. Uh, lieutenant to Michael made history when she was selected after receiving the highest score in the state on the promotion examination, the police chief. Uh, during Superstorm Sandy, Chief Michael and I worked tirelessly uh, together uh, after Superstorm Sa Sa Sandy uh, to rebuild our community, get everybody safe, and uh, you know we did a great job. In addition to being the chief of police, she was our OEM coordinator and led the agency residents through the tough times. Uh, with the support of the entire community, Chief Michael led us through the township office hours. Um, just want to take this opportunity to, uh, the last 10 years, it was a pleasure to work with Chief Michael. Uh, we wish her a very safe, long, and happy uh, retirement. I think the way keeps uh, going. <coughs> That's all I have. Okay, roll call. Councilman Bacchion? Yes. Councilwoman Gingrich? Yes. Councilman Burns? Yes. Councilman Signorelli? Yes. Councilman Buccio? Yes. Council President Cadano? Yes. Congratulations, Chief. Resolution 21-212R, awarding a lease of a small fenced-in storage area on the Colonel property to Bayville Storage, LLC, in the amount of $277 a month. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Roll call. Councilman Bacchion? Yes. Councilwoman Gingrich? Yes. Councilman Burns? Yes. Councilman Signorelli? Yes. Councilman Buccio? Yes. Council President Guadagno? Yes. Resolution 21-213R, awarding a lease of a large fenced-in storage area on the Colonel property to Bay Bayville Storage, LLC, in the amount of $552 a month. Motion to approve. Okay, second. Second it. 
Roll call. Councilman Bacchione? Yes. Councilman Walden Gingrich? Yes. Councilman Burns? Yes. Councilman Signorelli? Yes. Councilman Buccio? Yes. Council President Guadagno? Yes. Resolution 21-214R, awarding a lease of a billboard on the Colonel property to Martell's Waters Edge, Inc. in the amount of $600 a month. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Roll call. Councilman Bacchione? Yes. Councilwoman Gingrich? Yes. Councilman Burns? Yes. Councilman Signorelli? Yes. Councilman Buccio? Yes. Council President Guadagno. Yes. Resolution 21-215R, a resolution demanding fulfill not accept Kim Guadagno's resignation. I'll make that motion. Second. Second it. Roll call. Councilman Bacchione. Yes. Councilwoman Gingrich. Yes. Councilman Burns. Yes. Councilman Signorelli. Yes. Councilman Buccio. Yes. Council President Guadagno. Yes. Then I have Ordinance 21-15-OA, an ordinance of the Township of Berkeley, County of Ocean, State of New Jersey, authorizing a special emergency for the contractually required severance liabilities resulting from the layoff or retirement of Township employees in accordance with NJSA 48-4-53. Maybe you should uh, hold that until you actually get the resolution. The ordinance? What's we have the you? ordinance. Oh, uh, something else? Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. It's okay. Motion to approve. I need a second. <laughs> We need a second. Second. Roll call. Councilman Bacchione? Yes. Councilwoman Gingrich? Yes. Councilman Burns? Yes. Councilman Signorelli? Yes. Councilman Buccio? Yes. Councilman Goodan Council President Goodanio? Yes. And the last item I have is introduction of Ordinance 21-16-OA, and that's an ordinance amending the membership of the Waterways Commission. Motion to approve. Need a second. Need a second. 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 Thank you. Roll call. Councilman Bacchione? Yes. Councilwoman Gingrich? Yes. Councilman Burns? Yes. Councilman Signorelli? Yes. Councilman Buccio? Yes. Council President Guadagno? Yes. And Burns, Through the chair? Yes. Um, I have a uh, recommendation for uh, to fill the vacancy of Larry Borio Sr., who was, um, was everything over there, but uh, to Edwin Figler Jr., 62 Ocean Gate Avenue, Bayville. So this would be a resolution, uh, it's 21-216-R, mm -hmm. and that's um, an appointment to, to the fill Waterways a vacancy. Commission. Commission. And that's the mayor's appointment? No, just I an appointment. I have no idea. Uh, so we, another head in hand. Yeah, I, I don't know which I one think Larry is counsel. So do we have a motion? Yes, yeah, someone. Second. Second. Roll call. Councilman Bacchione. Yes. Councilman Burns? Yes. Councilwoman Gingrich? Yes. Councilman Signorelli? Yes. Councilman Buccio? Yes. Council President Guadagno? Yes. Just on the alternate floor, I'm going to the. Motion to close? The motion to adjourn. Hang on one second. The motion to close. I have the mayor and one council. Motion to close. Through the chair, before you entertain a motion to close. closing. I just want to make sure that the record is straight. I believe I heard. Uh, the council president may be working off the old agenda and stop at item 24 when he did the consent and resolution 205. I just want to make no, sure we're revised. The record's clear that it went through 209. That's correct. Item number 28. Thank you. Okay, good. And uh, second thing is the governing body, all of the council members, are also members of our redevelopment agency. The redevelopment agency has never needed to meet, but when this was formed, it was set up that way that the council would be the redevelopment agency and now there's been an application for development in the redevelopment area so that application cannot go forward to our boards whether it's the planning board or the zoning board on Seoul the redevelopment agency meets to discuss that application correct that is correct the ordinance the redevelopment ordinance puts forward the zoning requirements and bulk standards that will be applied to the redevelopment area so there is an applicant that is proposing a self storage facility in the in the area that in the in the redevelopment area it's actually at Blackbeard's cave just to if you're look if you're in route 9 it would be just to the right it's it, to, of the it's actually going to take up uh, it's just to the right of the batting cages so the driving range is is going away oh. If, if, it, if it's approved. So following that, we have to then amend, if, if the redevelopment uh, uh, committee agrees to this change in the redevelopment plan, 
then our office will need to amend the development ordinance to match what's being proposed. Don't they need approval from Jack Morris, the developer? Jack Morris will be invited to the meeting and he will have the opportunity to comment. He does not control that property. He still has the right and ability to buy that property if he wants. That's up to him. And the so, Wonder Wiener is out? Wonder Wiener is on the property next door to this. <laughs> so the purpose was to advise you that you make up this body and we are going to have to have a meeting slash hearing to discuss. Yeah, Laura's going to check if we have to have a chairman. Which chairman. we could adopt. I mean, we could appoint that day and, and take care of it. And then we're going to recommend John back you know, <laughs> Well, the recommendation free, right? stands, and we can. Another committee. And only because you're accept. on the planning. Only because you're on the planning. Oh, okay. And that kind of makes sense because you were through a lot of the planning. Well, there's like a gym next to you. We're good. And is the pleasure of the council slash redevelopment agency to have this meeting on a separate? date and time from your regular council meeting or tagged on like Earl before a council meeting, let's say? Would you want to meet? Uh, I mean, my personal opinion is you should do it a separate night because it's the first one, so you have no idea how long it's going to be. Either early or late in the day, one or the other. And it's full council? Yes. It's full yeah. council, yeah. As the chairman, I would say. <laughs> so <laughs> so we yeah, so it will be a separate standalone meeting date and the, the redevelopment council will organize and uh, appoint and we'll, a chairman and, and so forth and, and so roll right into the discussion on this application correct you don't want to be just to organize and then have to meet again Good. Thank well, you. Nice so we need Sounds like a plan. Thank you, Council President. Motion to close. Uh-huh. Motion. Okay. All in favor? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye, everyone.